Hey, I want to welcome you all to our new podcast. My name's Abraham. My name's Chris. This is called uh, Hear Me Out. What if? A podcast where we talk about the important things in life. Literally all of them. All of the important things. Everything important. Even if it's not important to you, it could be important to somebody. Yeah. So, Abe, hear me out. What if we talk about the house? Do you mean the Wilburn house? The Wilburn house, as it could be called. Could be called the Hill House. It was kind of on a hill, but yeah. that might infringe copyright, so we probably shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to call it the Hill House. I want the house on a hill. The house on a hill. <laughs> <laughs> That might also be copyright, but let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, or we just call it the Wilburn House. The I Wilburn feel like. House. That yeah. seems fair. There's never been a horror film about the Wilburn House. Yeah, no. They might want to write one though after uh, our story. It's uh, stories, I should say. It was a wild time. If you haven't figured out yet, the Wilburn House was um, special. It was. It was haunted. Oh, there's no beating around the bush. It was. Uh, that house was bad. That's true. It was a bit of a haunted house. And not like even a little bit haunted. Like, like you know, sometimes in life you experience like slightly weird things. Like you may feel like you're being followed. You may feel like uh, things are, are watching you. No, this house had like some straight up like weird, unexplainable things that, that you couldn't possibly explain any other way. That's true. And some of you might already know some of the stories. You've probably heard the one about the bear or the loud knock in the in the hallway or even the cardboard box with the name Bruce on it, which we'll get into here in a, in a little bit. But there's some other stories that have come up recently that we've kind of kept from each other just because of <laughs> how much it terrified us in the past. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I guess where do we want to start with this? Because there's a bunch of places you could start from. There, There is. So what if we just start with, I think it was the first night it happened, was the, uh, the loud slam. The loud slam, yeah. I'd gone to bed early that night. I don't even know why, but I was tired. Went to my room, went to go to sleep. And I'm like, y'all were hanging out in the living room. And so like, this is a... It's a pretty good sized house. It's like a 2,200 square foot house or so. There's like two living rooms in it, right? And then down the hall, there's like this long L-shaped hallway that kind of comes out of one of the living rooms. And at the very end of that L-shaped hallway is my bedroom. So I'm in this bedroom. Everyone else is in the first living room, which is beside the living room next to the L-shaped hallway. And, like, I'm just in there trying to go to sleep, trying to do my thing. And then out of nowhere, there's a loud freaking bang. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? These guys, these guys, uh, like, running into my door or something? Because it literally, like, it sounded like someone body slammed my bedroom door. Um, I thought someone was just messing with me, so I kind of, like, went back to sleep. But after a while, like, I got up and I walked into the living room. I was like, hey, guys, why'd y'all bang on my door? But uh, they, in fact, did not bang on my door. So it was kind of weird. Yeah, so Hannah, Hunter, and I, we were all living together last year. And this was, it was, it wasn't super early, but it wasn't super late either. It was, like, probably around 11, midnight-ish. And if you know us, you know that's not late for us at all. Like, it's 12 o'clock right now. We're making a podcast. So we're all hanging in the uh, in the living room watching some TV show. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. And we're just talking about just, just things you normally talk about, just friend stuff. Out of nowhere, this super loud bang, like Chris says, just happens. And this has never happened to any of us. We all just, Hannah, Hunter, and I looked at each other and we're like, 
did you guys hear that? And no one really wanted to go get up and look. And then we finally got up and Chris is opening the door. He's like, was that? Was that y'all? Like, no, was that not you? <laughs> is that not you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was the first night I think we've ever like dealt with any kind of haunted kind of issues. Yeah, and then in addition to that, um, Hannah, now Hannah's my wife, uh, for those of you that don't know. She's my old roommate. Yes. Uh, Hannah had said that like that night, Lucy, Lucy's our little dog, she's a psychotic chihuahua shih tzu mix, uh, and she was in the living room with him, and after this banging had happened, I guess Lucy had like looked towards the kitchen which like borders this L-shaped hallway uh, and just started like growling and barking at the kitchen and literally nobody is in the kitchen. And we're like, what in the world? And this is like all in the same night, same general time frame as this loud bang. Uh, so that was like the first night that weird things kind of happened. Hold on, because it still gets crazier from there. So we're, oh, so she's on, if I remember correctly, she's on Hunter's lap. Lucy is. She's just chilling, and I don't know where she just kind of gets up and starts growling, like you said, at the kitchen. There's nothing there. Like, absolutely nothing there. So Hunter and I get up to the kitchen to go see if if we see anything. And there's nothing there. You can't see anything. However, the kitchen does feel just a little cooler than the rest of the house. Lucy started getting closer, and she starts growling even more, almost to the point of barking. Mind you, she's never done this before. Ever. Ever. She's never, ever done this. So then I had the bright idea of, hey, what if we light some candles and set them up on the kitchen and the dining room table? So our house was kind of set up real weird. You had the living room at the back you had like the dining room slash entry room like in the middle and then you had the kitchen but there was no wall separating anything so in the middle room the dining room we went ahead and put the candles in we lit them all and when i think back i honestly have no idea what i would have done and if if any of those candles would have just gone out i don't know what i was thinking thinking back that that's just a horrible idea on my end yeah that's that's a bad idea yeah it was a terrible idea i didn't know what to do but i mean it was the first time any of us have ever really encountered anything like that luckily none of them went out lucy finally calmed down she still did it a couple times throughout the night um but not as severe as the first time and then the from there on out it just gets crazy honestly yeah, it gets pretty wild from that point on. Uh, I don't know what the next best thing. I guess maybe Hunter's uh, crazy shower experience might be another good good point in this story. So this boy is... Hunter's our old roommate also, by the way, for those of you that don't know Hunter. And I still live with Hunter. Uh, we've been living together for, what, two years, three years now? A two, while. three years. Yeah. It's been a minute. <clears throat> He's, uh, it's in the morning. He's going to take a shower, you know, before work. And when he gets out of the shower, he comes to my room and knocks. He's like, dude, something scratched my leg. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I didn't have this before I went in there. And while I was showering, I felt something really weird on my leg. But I never looked down until just now. And sure enough, there's a scratch on this boy's leg. And it's not like a small scratch either. No, it's like a fingernail running across your leg kind of scratch. Boy's got a huge scratch. And at first I was like, no, nah, dude, you definitely probably hit it on something. He's like, no, man. It wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. It's the ghost. <laughs> uh, man, there were like lots of other things that happened. There was like your dream. It was old man Bruce. There was the one, oh man, so the one that really, well, I guess we have to tell the story of the bear. Should we still, so we should, we shouldn't tell the new ones yet, because, yeah, tell people about the ones that we, that they know about, so, 
those two. Well, Hunters isn't as well known. Hunters but, isn't as well known, but it's but, like, but it's you know, it's mixed in properly during the time frame. And like the bear, the bear is probably the next thing that's like super important. True. So, so Hannah has this friend named Megan, right? And Megan, I guess, had dated this dude. Who knows what his name is? Who cares, really? Uh, and he had given her this massive bear. Uh, and like so, like huge, like, like a person face. can fit in this bear. So it's not a normal bear. Like it's those really big, annoying bears from Walmart that like high school kids get their high school crushes. And that's where it should have stayed was in high school. But no, we were like, hey, take your bear home because we don't have space for it. And she was like, nah, man. I don't have space for it either in my dorm. It's not going with me. So we're like, okay, fine. Just keep it here, I guess. And this is where it gets really weird. Yeah, so she leaves the bear at the house. Uh, and, and like, also during this general time period, after she's brought the bear to the house, we notice a lot of things, like, go missing in the household. Uh, and some of them we feel like could be explained through questionable behavior uh but some of them are like much less um uh, normal like just things would just disappear like out of nowhere paranormal <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> uh <laughs> um but yeah like things would go missing all the time like uh lighters would go missing uh, like just one of my shirts went missing, and I never found, found it, it ever again. Ever, uh, I did lose a lot of clothes in that house randomly, and like we had a lot of people that live there, but no one's ever been like, "Oh, hey, I found this random medium black V neck," because that's like all I wear. Um, so yeah, but like things went missing all the time, and around this, anyway. So Megan has this bear. She brings this bear over, leaves it in our place, because we can't, uh, we apparently seemed like an inviting place to leave it. Uh, and then, like, weird things start happening, weird things go missing. Well, maybe, like, the creepiest thing that happens. We so let me, let me preface this just a little bit. Is that the right word? Who, whatever. Preface. Who cares? Pre- <laughs> Same thing, just whatever. So, during this ghost stuff, this haunted stuff, we had agreed, no pranks. Just because we've all gone through way too much in this house. We're like, no, man. We need to agree right here, right now. We're not doing any pranks. So I swear to you on everything. This next story, it's true. It happened. No one did anything. Because, again, we all agreed to no pranks. We we were all dead set. We, You know that scene from the movie It where they like cut their hands and they make that blood pact? That's basically what we did without yeah, the blood. Yeah, no blood. Yeah, yeah. With, like, peanut butter. Yeah, so, like, if it was, like, a real ghost, we would go back in, like, 27 years and try to fight it. That That's the kind of pact that we made. We're like, all right, no, cool, we're not doing that. So I get home from work. <clears throat> and it's around 5.30, 6 o'clock. Everyone is napping. When I left for work... This giant teddy bear was left on a chair. The chair I am actually currently sitting in. Uh, that's weird. It is the chair <laughs> you're sitting creepy. in. kind of creepy. We set it there. No one's touched in probably a couple, what, two weeks, three weeks maybe. It's just kind of sat there. I get home from work. The bear is right by the door. Our house had two doors. One door always stayed locked, shut, never moved. The other door was the one with the key door was the one you would go inside through, go to get into the house. Well, the bear was sitting right there where the door that doesn't move. Everyone in the house is asleep. We had promised to make no kind of pranks just because of this issue so the first thing i do is that i text y'all or like that knock on your doors no you texted us and you're like hey who did this that's right and we're like uh (laughs) (laughs) what do you mean i was like no the bear moved 
by itself. No one touched it. Yeah, and I think I'd I'd been at work already for a long time at that point, maybe. If you guys know us at all, you know that we love our naps. Yeah, so it's six o'clock, six thirty. The it's still the the night the, the day is still bright and early, but it's starting to get darker. And I text everybody that I was like, Hey, did you guys move the bear? And everyone said no. This is a giant teddy bear from Walmart, like the really big ones that you buy. It doesn't move on its own. I still don't know how to explain this. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this bear ended up by the front door on its own. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's literally no way to explain it. <laughs> uh, and so at this point, we... I don't think I went to sleep tonight. Where we like... We kind of figure, like, maybe it's the bear. Like, what if the bear's possessed? Like, everyone's heard of Annabelle the doll. Well, this is like... And a bear. And a bear. <laughs> the bear. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Here you go. <laughs> it's like... Way, way less sinister. But, but maybe more sinister. Uh, Luckily, I never saw it move, which is like the super cool part. <laughs> yeah, we never like physically saw it move. It, it we just, do have a different story about that later. It just moved to a different place. Uh, and at that point, we think like maybe the bear's possessed. Maybe there's something weird going on. We're like, at this point, we're like, okay, this is no longer just like thing. This can't just be coincidental. Like loud bang. Okay, houses make loud bangs. Like dogs barking at weird things. Okay, that happens. Lucy things, doesn't have the best eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Things things getting going missing and like disappearing. That totally happens. Giant freaking bears moving on their own doesn't doesn't really happen. And we still somewhat sort of ignored Hunter getting scratched. Yeah, we kind of just like ah, we're like, hey, that happened. All right, let's maybe, move on with our lives. Maybe it happened. Let's move on with our lives somehow. So we, maybe we don't want to. We don't want to go back to that. <laughs> yeah, we just like we're like ah, maybe it's explainable. But a giant teddy bear moved on its own from a couch about maybe fifteen feet away. Yeah, it's like air, air ain't gonna move a bear that big. No, isn't that a stream of water pushing that bear? So, Nobody else doing it. Hunter and I did the only thing that you could do in the situation. We started to torture it. Yeah, we did a bear exorcism. Basically. Without the Jesus, what is it? The, yeah, no, the power like, of Christ compels you. We didn't do that. None of that. We, we probably should have, though. We just beat it. We did. We uh, The first thing we did was uh, take its eyeballs off, and we kept them for some <laughs> weird reason. <laughs> And then we did lots of un, unspeakable yeah, violence. We're not going to get into bear all what we did with a baseball bat and just <clears throat> destroyed it. Uh, and it was uh, it was a good time. And after that, things like kind of calmed down ish. Kind of. Kind of. But you had a dream. Yeah, I had a really weird dream. So I don't remember the time frame. I think somewhere around July. I had a dream where this, uh, I'm sitting on my couch, on my black couch. If you've been over to the house, you know what couch I'm talking about. Nice, comfy couch. I'm sitting on my couch in the living room in the old house. When an old man just appears out of nowhere, sits right next to me, looks at me, shakes my hand, and says, Hi, my name is Bruce. And then disappears, and I wake up. I thought this was a really odd dream, so I went ahead and told the rest of the gang. And they're like, yeah, that's a weird dream. I don't know why that at all really matters. However, I was convinced this 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 ghost is Nate Ghosts? Ghostus. I was convinced its name was Bruce. And let me tell you, somewhere around Halloween, it's trash day, you know. The big trash people come up, they take their stuff. We hadn't really told anyone about this Bruce thing yet. So, like, no one really knew. So, I know it wasn't a prank. A giant cardboard box shows up in front of our house. And what's on it? Bruce. The word Bruce, man. Just huge. 
just says Bruce giant box front yard and it's not like it's not like it was delivered from the mail people because you know they put it by the front door they'll put it by the mailbox no this is just sitting in the middle of the yard this giant box that says Bruce I remember one of you texting I think it may have been Hunter it was someone texting me hey did, did you see the box outside I was like, no, what are you talking about? Oh, that was me, fam. I was like... Oh, uh, that was you? <laughs> I was like, uh, y'all see this box in the front yard? <laughs> yeah, that's right, yes. <laughs> and it slowly crept its way up into our doorstep. And everyone inside. But like, we, no, we, we didn't touch it. We didn't want to touch it. This house, we've already had so many experiences with this house. Which, we're, there's so many more stories we're not even telling you guys yet. We're going to get there, don't worry. Bruce. Bruce. I dreamt about an old man named Bruce. A couple months later, a box, a giant cardboard box, shows up at our in our, in our driveway at first, with the word name on it, Bruce. And it's a big box, and then it's big letters, Bruce. Bruce. And it was it was empty. There was nothing in it. But still, that's super super weird. I didn't like that one at all. And then. Uh... Man, I don't even know what uh, where to go from here. I guess we can start telling the ones that they don't know about. Yeah, like the... Not only like a really small story. handful. The like weird things that we kind of kept to ourselves because <clears> there <throat> were like weird things that happened. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to go? Do I want to go? I mean, I guess I can tell one of mine and then you can tell yours and then I'll tell the other one that I have and then you tell yours and then I'll, I guess I'll finish it off. I only with have the, uh, one, don't I? No, Hannah had one. Hannah had one. Yeah. Yeah, you go first. Okay. It was late night. Late at night. I'm going to bed. And like most people, some people, I don't know, I sleep on my side sometimes. My, I turn my light off. I have the smart lights, so I just use my phone, turn my lights off. Lay on my side when I feel... A hand on my shoulder. Not like a tap, not like like my blanket. I, you can't mistake. You, when you know when someone touches you with their hand on your shoulder, it's a very distinct feel. It felt like a human hand on my shoulder. When I tell you I got out of that bed so fast, I, I would make Bruce Lee look super slow. That's how fast I got out of my bed. I did not sleep in my bedroom that night. Thinking back, I shouldn't have slept in the couch on the couch either because that room was just as bad as everything else in that entire house. But what else was I supposed to do? I wasn't going to drive to my parents' house. It's like 2 a.m. <laughs> in, in the morning. The <laughs> they would have been like, are you okay, mijo? I'm like, no. no. But I don't want to tell you what happened either. A hand, a whole hand on my shoulder. That's, as far as I know, that's the only other physical contact that the, the thing had had made on any of us. The other one was Hunter's, and then mine was a hand touching my shoulder. Luckily, I never saw anything. I still don't know what I would do to this day if I saw anything. Yeah, I guess I can tell the story about the breaking glass, which is a really freaky one. Uh, or, or I guess the not breaking glass. So one night, sleeping, right? Wake up in the middle of the night. Nighttime is when weird things happen. That's like a... Especially in this house. That's maybe. a pattern. So I wake up in the middle of the night, just randomly. Like, after I've woken up, I literally hear, like, glass breaking. Like, super loud glass breaking. And so, like, you got to keep in mind, in this house, there's, like... In the living room, there's this giant mirror, like huge mirror. Uh, I don't. If I had to guess, like eight, eight feet by. I think 12 it was bigger feet. than that. Uh, well, huge. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tall, tall wise, it was definitely like, eight foot tall yeah. by sixteen feet wide. I don't know. Huge it, mirror, massive. It looked mirror. made the house look way bigger than what it was. <laughs> and then and the like house was the, really big. yeah, huge giant mirror and then, like the back door is like one of those sliding glass doors and there's also like this giant window in the living room 
And so I'm like thinking like, okay, one of a couple of things has happened. Like I woke up, I hear the loudest like glass smashing sound I've ever heard in my life. Uh, and this is like after I've woken up. It's not like the sound woke me up. I woke up, then I hear this sound. And I'm thinking one of two things has happened. Either one, someone has broken into the house by smashing the sliding glass door or the window. Or somehow the mirror has fallen down uh, and smashed all over the floor. Uh, but I don't like the odds of which one it's going to be in that situation. And I know my bedroom door is locked. So I'm thinking like, I'm going to just go back to bed. Like, if someone's broken into the house, either we're about to get robbed or we're about to die. And if we're about to die, then I might as well die in bed. So, so I, uh, I just go back to bed. Uh, though I've heard this super loud noise. Wake up the next morning, go into the living room. Guess what? There's, there's literally nothing broken. There's no glass broken. There's nothing, nothing on the floor. The windows are fine. The door's fine. The mirror's fine. And like, rewind, once I'd woken up, once I'd heard the sound, I text Abraham and Hunter and I'm like, did you guys hear this? And of course. And no one answers because boys, we were out. It's like, it's like 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Yeah, 3 a.m. 4 a.m. The Wiccan hour. What? It's the Wiccan hour. The hour w- of the witch. The witching hour. The witching hour. So that was freaky. Not a good experience. Weird thing. Literally super loud. Glass breaking. It's not like a house creaking. It's like, like super loud. Uh, not cool. No, not, cool, not at all. And I have a very similar story too with more glass breaking. So it's a Monday. And let me give you a little backstory. Not much, though. I work. I was working Monday mornings, um, opening shift, you know. Wake up at 8.30, sometimes 8, depending on how I feel. Get up, do my morning routine of struggling to get out of bed, as one does. And then I finally get up and go take a shower. So, Monday mornings, Chris is normally off. And he was still working at the dog rumors at the time. Um, <clears throat> and this is one that I really haven't told like almost anybody. They know about it, but they've only known about it for like under a month. So it's it's just just a Monday morning. It's like eight thirty. I didn't know I was home alone, so I'll just start with that. I thought it, I thought Chris was home because he's normally home on Mondays. <laughs> Wake up, alarm goes off, shut it off, start getting ready contemplate whether or not whether or not I want to go to work when I hear a knock on my door and then I hear like the hand a hand sliding across my door so first thing I thought was like this boy is being weird but whatever it's Monday it's his day off I'm not going to say anything I grab my towels head to the bath head to the bathroom start showering and I hear plates like breaking it's not one or two. It's like three plates just back to back to back. And at first, I'm like, what is this dude doing? He's he's probably having a really rough day, just breaking stuff left and right. And it sounds... You've, if you've ever heard of like a plate break, it's not a soft sound. It's a really loud sound. And there's three of those, just back to back to back. Still, not thinking anything of it, because I'm not used to being home alone on Mondays. So I go back to my bedroom, I start changing, getting ready for work. Before I head out to work, I'm finally fully dressed. I walk into the kitchen just to make sure like all the plates and stuff were cleaned up and taken care of. I look around, there's nothing there. And I was like, wow, he cleaned up. Good. That's awesome. I look into the trash cans. I don't see anything there either. Still nothing clicking. I'm still not thinking, no, ghost. No, no. So I'm like, okay, maybe he took it out to the trash. So I start walking out to my car, and I realize his car's not there. I was like, when did Chris even leave? Like, I didn't even hear him leave. Still, nothing. I'm not, nothing's clicking yet. Go to work, do my stuff, come back home from work. And at some point, I either asked Chris or overheard Chris talking about how he actually had to go to work that morning and be there like at 8. 
The entire time I was hearing these things, I was home alone. <laughs> when it finally clicked, I, I just kind of froze for a second. Uh, what do you, what do you do? How do you react? Because that's probably how I reacted. I just stood there. I froze. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do anything or say anything. <laughs> I never told them because it's the one thing that I think I, I thought I was the only one that experienced loud noises breaking like that. Until I told Chris, and Chris told me his, and I was like, "Oh, hey, twinsies." <laughs> twinsies. <laughs> In the worst way possible, but twinsies. Both possessed. There was no glass brick broken. This is all a sound, a weird, weird sound from. Again, Bruce. I, I still think it was Bruce. I've never had anything like this happen to me. So I I did what everyone else would do. I didn't talk about it. I just kept that in my brain. And I was like, okay, this one's not going out ever. We'll talk about the bear one because it happened to everybody. But not this one. This one happened solely to me. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right. I know you have another one about something on your ceiling. Oh, yeah. I mean, this one isn't, like, super crazy. It's just, like, uh, another time. Yeah, but it's still super creepy. It's it's creepy, for sure. Wake up in the middle of the night, you know, because sometimes your boy's got to pee. And I wake up, and then I, like, immediately, like, upon waking up, I just, like, get the feeling that there's, there's something in my room. I feel like there is a person in my room or something. And like, I like, I'm like looking up at the ceiling from my bed. And I just get like this super overwhelming sense that like something is there. You know, it's like whenever you're like, uh, you're like in the woods or you're in nature. And you can tell that there's like an animal or something in the brush. Uh, cause you can just like sense that there's like another being there and normally it's just like a squirrel or a cat or something goofy. It was like that, but on my ceiling, uh, and there was in fact no squirrel or cat on my ceiling. There was nothing on my ceiling, but it very much like, it just felt like there was something there and it was super, super weird and it was super, super creepy. And because of that, I didn't go to the bathroom. I just went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I probably would have done the same. I just would have been like, "This isn't my problem." <laughs> this, I'm just gonna go back to bed. And this isn't this isn't worth up. getting out of bed. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna roll like, what over. Do, what do I even do if I see something like? I'm gonna roll over. I'm gonna close my eyes <laughs> and go back to bed. <laughs> go back to bed. <laughs> so Hannah and Hunter thought they told us a story, but they never did. <laughs> but they <laughs> didn't. <laughs> so. It's one night that Chris and I aren't there. And it's not nighttime. It's still like afternoon-ish, 4 or 5 o'clock. Again, we nap a lot. Or we did. Chris and Hannah hear a super loud bang again. Hunter thought he was home alone. Hannah thought she was home alone. So they both bust out of their rooms. And Hunter strapped. Now, if you're listening to this, if you don't know what strapped means... Just look it up. I'm not explaining it to you. <laughs> you got to get with the culture, man. Boy, boy got a piece. <laughs> <laughs> but he comes out, and he's looking around, and Hannah was like, was that not you? Like, no. Was that not you? She's like, no. It sounded like someone knocked over a big something. Hunter thought someone was breaking into the house. Hannah thought the same thing. But there was nothing there. Nothing was knocked over. It was just a super loud sound once again, but Same it happened. To, yeah. Same hallway, but it just happened to them too. And they never told us this until like a couple, like, well, like two, three, that was like a month ago or so. Yeah. Like a month ago. I started telling my stories and then they, they, she told us that and we we're like, no, yeah, no, you, you never told us this story. This is not something you ever told us. And I've also had a couple different times where. It's either nighttime or morning, and my doorbell would move. Um, and I think we all had those experiences, honestly. Your doorbell would move? Yeah. My oh, I said it again, <laughs> didn't I? Jesus. <laughs> my doorknob. <laughs> I 
I keep saying doorbell. Anyways, the door knob would move on its own, and I know there was no one there. Oh, dude. Remember, remember the night we finished Haunting of Hill House? Oh, and the smoke? Yes. Okay, so, you know normally when a candle goes out, it just stops. It doesn't keep going, right? Once the candle, there's no more oil, it just goes away. This night, we had, it was like 3 a.m. in the morning. Again, we're late night people. That's just kind of, that's just who we are. We uh, we finally finished the season of Haunting of Hill House, which if you haven't seen, by the way, probably one of the best, one of the absolute best horror shows I've ever seen. I would say it's one of the best horror anything, like shows, movies, Best storytelling, best characters. That's fair. Hey, if you guys want to want us here, want to hear us do like a review on that show, we we do it. I do it. Yeah, leave your leave it down in the comments section. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> it's not a comment <laughs> section. <laughs> Just let us know if you want to hear a review. Anyways, regardless, yeah. slide into my DMs. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> But for real. <laughs> so anyway. we finish the show, <laughs> and we get to my room. And okay, I know this is gonna sound super irresponsible, but I left my candle lit while I was in the living room. But again, when a candle goes out, it doesn't continue to make smoke. This candle did. It didn't stop. Like made so much smoke that the whole house was smoky. And we're like, what in the world is happening? Like, we get up off the bed, or not off the bed, (laughs) off the couch. The couch. (laughs) Uh, We get up off the couch, and we're like looking around, and we immediately notice that it's like super smoky. And we're like, "Uh, A, we just finished a pretty creepy show. Uh, And we get up, and our house is literally filled with smoke. I normally lock my door, or close my door. At the old house, I always closed it. It was just, just, it just open just enough, just to where you could bit. see that my light was on in the inside. It was dimmed, but you can still see there. Was and light it was on. red. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but my entire room was full of smoke. Like it, I just imagine a smoky room. Like imagine a bar, like a pool hall with like all the smoke. But times multiply that by like ten. It's it got the entire house full of smoke. It's from a little candle. From one little candle. And again, when a candle goes out, it just turns off. This candle did not go out. It kept going. So I did what anyone else would do. I threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> I doused it with water and threw it away. Got, got rid of that candle real fast. <laughs> I still, I still don't understand. I can't explain that night. Uh, it's pretty weird. I feel like, uh, hey, if there's any physicists out there who specialize in candle physics, uh, let us know how that happened. And why it happened. <laughs> and, you know, other stories include something like, many times I've heard the front door slam, and I'm always like, oh, someone's home. No one was ever home. The entire time I heard door slams. And it I feel like it always happened to me. Unless the other two aren't saying anything. Keeping stories behind. Like I've kept one specific one I'll talk about in a minute. No, I mean... Like I heard door slams a lot in that house. But again, like... Yeah. Was it Jeff? Was it Bruce? We don't was know. it Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> that boy... Also... For those of you that don't know, Jeff, other roommate. There was a lot of people living yeah. in this house. There was also another roommate, Taylor. Yeah, I mean, she kind of became like honorary roommate at one point. Yeah, I mean, she she basically she lived, lived with there. us. Yeah. yeah, so Taylor is Hunter's girlfriend. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, she told me once of uh, I think if I remember correctly, she said she was home alone. <clears throat> she was getting off work and no one was home. And she said she was walking to the living room or something like that. And she saw a face in the backyard. And she automatically noped out of that house and texted Hannah. Hey, when are you going to get home? I don't like being here alone. 
So, I think other than her and this other person I'm going to tell you all about have seen stuff. I never saw anything, thank God. Did you ever see anything? No. No? No, I didn't see anything. Hannah never saw anything. Hunter never saw anything. Hunter felt stuff. I felt stuff, unfortunately. Another thing, another really common thing in this house was I always felt like I was being watched. And so does Hannah. So did Hannah. Because we used to talk about it all the time. And then spe- like specifically where I felt like I was being watched from all the time was that little corner, the L corner, the bathroom. Hunter and I's bathroom. Always. So I always kept the, hall, the lights on. The only room I felt safe in in that house was the garage. And guess who never really had any experiences in the house? Jeff. Because he uh, he uh, lived in our garage for like six months. <laughs> That's true. He really He really didn't have anything super weird happen in the house. Unless he's like, you know, bottling it up inside like we are. Like you we know, did. He could be. So, I think we're going to wrap it up with this last story. And this one happened in July. Everyone was out of town. I don't remember what for. Um, Hunter was out of town. I think it may have been like July 4th weekend or something. 4th of July weekend. I don't know why I said that's so weird. I'm home alone. And I have a friend call me. Hits me up. She's like, He's like, hey, I am very, very intoxicated right now can you is there any way i can sleep by your house i don't want to go home and i don't want to drive anywhere and i was like dude yeah it's fine so i go i pick him up i bring him back home i he doesn't know that this house is haunted and i wasn't going to tell him that this house is haunted while he's in his current state i was like yeah man just just chill out you know go to bed whatever the next morning when i wake up he's sobering up from his crazy night out tells me that multiple times throughout the night while he got up to go pee he saw an old man twice in the kitchen and once in the living room he never questioned it because he thought it was like my grandpa or something but he told me and i still didn't tell him that our house was haunted and i don't really tell the story much because again this person was drunk so I don't know if I could 100% if I could 100% trust him. But I mean, it lines up. It adds up. Old man, Bruce, appearing in the house multiple times, three times, once in the kitchen. And so we always left the kitchen light on, not the big light, just the one with like the little baby light. Little baby light. We're like the oven, you know, the oven light, just so the house wouldn't be pitch black because our house was always super creepy whenever it was really dark. It was creepy regardless. This person told me about it, and I was like, and they're like, do you have anyone that lives here? And I was like, no, it's literally just me right now. Everyone else is gone. This is the only time that I know of that anyone's ever seen anything in this house. This person didn't know that the house was haunted. I still didn't tell this person that it was a haunted house. Uh, But I can tell you, this person never came back. I don't know where this person is anymore. We did work together, and now now we don't work together. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the last story. I don't know if I can, I don't, I don't know if I can believe it entirely, but I mean, it, it just, it's just too much of a coincidence. And then there's just like, you know, the other like general psychological phenomena in the house and, and like, for those of you that don't know, uh, I experienced some good old sleep paralysis, uh, and I, and I experience it with some regularity, uh, like I would say, on average, I probably experience it, you know, once a month. Yeah, uh, same. Maybe twice a month. It's normal for me now. Uh, and it's like a semi-regular phenomenon, probably tied to some kind of sleep disorder, you know. Uh, but what's what's real creepy is in this house, it was like a, a significantly higher occurring phenomenon. Uh, and so like probably at least once a week, uh, sometimes even more than that, sometimes even a couple times in a night, I would experience sleep paralysis. And it's definitely not the kind of thing that is an enjoyable experience. Like you don't want to just wake up in the middle of 
the night uh, or, or in the morning. Uh, any time, really, and yeah, then realize anytime. you can't move. And not you literally not be able to move. You're just kind of in that horrible state. And, like, eventually you develop patterns for, uh, like, learning to wake yourself up uh, and, like, different motions and, and habits you can form. Uh, but nonetheless, like, just the fact that, like, during the time I lived in that house, uh, was having sleep paralysis at least once a week. Uh, now that I'm no longer in that house, I'm back to, like, the usual, like, eh, maybe once a month. Uh, and it's still deeply unpleasant, but not happening yeah, I've, <laughs> every I've, week. I've also learned when I go, when I do go through a sleep paralysis, you know, experience not to open my eyes because that's literally the worst thing you can do is open your eyes but that's i feel like this is a uh, more stories for another episode yeah that's just like more things or in the house we both experienced like general psychological issues you know i think we all did depression the house was super toxic for our health our mental Good health. old uh, call of the void if you don't know what that is uh don't google it it'll freak you out yeah we swear we're okay, though, if you do Google it. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, we're fine we're past now. It. We're great. Uh, but, yeah, during my time in that house, like, super, super depressed a lot of times, uh, just out of nowhere, which is, again, not an enjoyable experience. No longer in the house, not really experiencing a lot of those phenomena anymore. My anxiety was through the roof in that house. Like, you, you remember. There was times where I just get home go grab my stuff and get out the house and leave for hours. And now that I'm not in that house, I haven't, I can't tell you, well, no, I had an anxiety attack a couple of days ago, but that's just because of other things. Yeah. But beyond that, the last time be- before that, I can't tell you the last time I actually had one. I have no idea. It's wild. Yeah. My anxiety is pretty much, pretty much mellowed out for now. So the house was crazy. And like, let's throw this in there. It's not like we lived in the house for a long time. Like we lived in the house 15 months ish yeah 14 that's, that's about right. 14 15 months somewhere in that range uh not a long period of time and like this is a lot of stuff that happened during the time we lived in the house a lot of like i almost died crazy things remember that as we were trying to move out your boy almost died he almost died yeah i remember I was um, hospitalized in January because of it. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. that then? We were still living in the house, yeah. That was earlier Oh, this my year. goodness. That was then. Yeah. Sweet Jesus. That's crazy. Yeah. You literally were, uh, were hospitalized. For a week. For an entire week. Yeah. It, it wasn't pleasant. I'm good now. <laughs> was it the house? Who knows? We At this point, I don't know. Um, we could blame the house or my poor well, eating habits. But was, <laughs> was the house haunted? Who? No, we know. Who knows? <laughs> no, we know. You, we know that house was haunted. You be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're going to wrap it up here. All right. Do you have any crazy stories that you want to tell us about? Or, hey, do you want to be on the show and tell us your stories? That would be a good one. Yeah. If you If you want to just come hang out with us. Uh, down in the basement and uh, <laughs> talk about a story that you have. Talk about something important, you know, because this is the podcast about the important things in life. Yeah. There's only one podcast about the important things in life. And it's this one. And there's only one podcast that talks about all the important things in life. It's also this one. It's this one. I think next episode we should talk about sleep paralysis because I have some crazy stories and I feel like you might have some crazy stories too. I don't have too many. I mean, I I have have like the first three were just absolutely awful. A few. You just talk about it in general and like what it's like to have sleep paralysis. Again, if you want to be on the show and talk about your... <laughs> That's yelling for people with sleep paralysis. <laughs> and at some point, it just goes to a yell. You start with the real, like, weird, just like, Ugh, and then it finally turns into a yell once you get control of your body. <laughs> you, you literally just like, nah! <laughs> for those of you who had sleep paralysis, you might find that super funny. <laughs> for those of you who hadn't, <laughs> just move on. Uh, well. <laughs> 
I guess that is all of the stories about the haunting of Wilburn House. Yes. So we don't get copyright. <laughs> so we don't break copyright infringement. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm Abe. And I'm Chris. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>